Coming up, an unbelievable story. A woman kidnapped as a teenager twice. Her kidnapper has come after her again 30 years later. She's now trying to help families with young children avoid abduction. I'll talk to actress Jan Broberg Felt up next. Welcome back. The story I'm about to tell you sounds like a movie, but it's real. In 1974, when my next guest was 12 years old, she was kidnapped by a trusted family friend. The man picked her up from a piano lesson, drugged her, and kept her for 55 days as the two of them lived in a motor home traveling from Idaho to Mexico. During the two months she was held captive, the man brainwashed her, causing her to believe in aliens and that it was her duty to have a child with him to save an alien planet. She was finally freed by Mexican police cooperating with the FBI and returned to her family. Later, at age 14, she was kidnapped again by the same man. He spent less than two months in uh, jail for the first abduction and only 19 days and five months in a mental hospital for the second abduction. He served another year in prison in 1986 after he pleaded guilty to raping another child. And then last month, he tried to approach her again. Jan Broberg Felt is that woman. She's an actress appearing regularly on the television series Everwood and Touched by an Angel. 30 years after her abduction, she started to speak publicly about her experiences, along with her mother, Mary Ann, who wrote the book Stolen Innocence about the family ordeal. Jan Broberg Felt joins me now. Thanks so much uh, for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Nice to be here, Dan. Thank you. So first tell me about, about this guy coming up to you recently or trying to approach you recently. Tell me what happened. I've been giving some National Child Abuse Conference awareness speeches around the country and I've been asked to speak at a college to a group of women and after the conference was finished all of a sudden the police are shoving me out of the window out of the foyer saying there's someone in a van out in the parking lot and he's apparently tried to run over one of the members of BACA Bikers Against Child Abuse had accompanied me to the conference as sort of my personal bodyguards um, and that was all true the man uh, the license plate was taken and he was picked up about 10 minutes later and sure enough the man was Robert Birch told my original kidnapper he had come to the scene trying to hand out literature trying to make some sort of a statement oh, and, and that must have really I would assume m made you beyond uncomfortable frightened tell me yeah absolutely I was very frightened uh, particularly for the safety of my own children and my family and for the safety of any community that has people like this who are not in jail this man is a repeat offender and obviously should not be. Yeah. How is it? I mean, ex explain that. I mean, explain to me the theory. I mean, I, I know you don't support it, but, but, but how is it that this guy has served so little time uh, for kidnapping you twice, uh, and then I assume he's out already on, uh, on the attempt to get at you again last month? Oh, absolutely. He was charged with several misdemeanors and, and posted bail that very night. Yeah, unbelievable and disappointing to me. Well, the reason that I think people like this are walking the streets is because they prey on children. And when you have somebody who preys on you as a child, and then many years later you're finally ready to talk about that experience, either the statutes of limitations prevent you from prosecuting, or you as a person have tried to move on, forget, have had your counseling, and now you don't want to revisit that monster in your life so you're not po prosecuting and also most of these kinds of sexual predators are people that our children know and love people that their parents know and love and so it becomes this family secret oh well we're not going to tell on Uncle Harry oh now shush 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 you that's probably not true or oh that's in the past let's sweep it under the rug so most of the time these types of predators are never truly prosecuted. Now, he was prosecuted for kidnapping, never prosecuted for rape of a child in my case. I didn't tell what had fully happened to me until I was 23 years old. By that time, the statutes of limitations in Idaho were far gone. And, and did you not do that earlier? Because, I mean, he had essentially brainwashed you as a child. Um, was it something where at 23 you came back and you said to yourself, wait a second, I just realized what had happened to me? Or was it something you just hadn't wanted to talk about up to that point? both. I did not know until I was almost 17 years old that the brainwashing, the story that he had given me was actually false. I believed for four years of my life that we had both 
been kidnapped by a UFO and that we were to do everything they told us. One of those things being that I was to have a child with this man to save this alien planet. Now that may seem, you know, impossible to you, but to a 12-year-old child who is strapped to the back of a motorhome bed, who wakes up to the sound of a high-pitched monotone voice in her ear calling her female companion, it is time for your mission to begin. I'd, I'd already been groomed for two and a half years by this man. By this time, he'd become like a second father. He'd taken his five children, the three of us in my family, to the science fiction movies. It was in the early 70s where there were all kinds of sightings of UFOs oh. in the paper. And so this little girl, these seeds had been planted. When I woke up in the back of that motorhome, it took two seconds to be brainwashed. I completely believed the story. Janet, just so, just so we're clear, the picture that we're seeing of you hugging a, a little girl hugging an older man mm -hmm. is you with the man with him that's him uh -huh. uh. he was like my second father he had befriended uh. our entire family became best friends with my father uh. his children and us we were all good all right. friends i got i got to wrap it up very quick how how are you doing in general these days you know what i'm doing very well when you live through something like this you survive it you hope to conquer the demons you thrive and then you hope to help other people that's why we published our story in the book stolen innocence we want others to be smarter than we were uh, Judge, Superior Court Judge Charles Gill writes the afterword and outlines everything my parents did wrong and also some of the things they did right. We hope that others will be smarter than we were. Bravo to you. The book is called <laughs> Stolen Innocence. Thanks very much uh, for coming back on the, coming on the program. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan.